Hello students. So today we are going to learn the fourth part of the chapter inheritance and variation. In this part we are going to learn autosomal inheritance in that widow's peak, phenylketonuria, then sex linked inheritance, color blindness, hemophilia, sex determination in human beings, in birds and in honeybees. Also genetic disorders that is thalassemia, Down syndrome, Turner syndrome. Now moving further, uh, just a simple animation slide I put up to understand the concept of uh, genetic engineering, gene therapy, gene manipulation. Okay, now if you see in this animation image, you can see a gene, a wrong gene or a um, gene which is being affected, which can be treated with the help of gene therapy. We get a better gene and the different disorders like color blindness, trisomy, Down syndrome, all things can be cured. So if it can be identified the wrong gene in the early stage and it can be rectified with the various methodology of gene therapy. Okay. Now moving further, autosomal inheritance. Human somatic cell that is deployed contains 23 pair of chromosomes. They can be divided functionally as autosomes and sex chromosomes. As we know, 22 pairs that is the autosomes and single pair of sex chromosome. A single pair of sex chromosome is divided or is involved in sex determination and remaining 22 pairs are called autosomes. So 22, the autosomes or we can say uh, which uh, is the human somatic cells where one pair is the sex chromosome which determines the male or the female. Autosomes control a variety of traits other than sex determination. These traits are called autosome linked traits. Transmission of body characters are then the sex linked traits from parents to the offspring through autosomes is called autosomal inheritance. Now, as we learn about the autosomal inheritance, so the 22 pairs, that is the autosomes, also carry different characteristics, traits or factors other than the, the sex determination which is done by the single pair of sex chromosomes, right? So, uh, these traits are passed on from parents to their Offspring. So various traits which you are going to learn further, it may be widow's peak, dimple cheek or chin, joint or free earlobe, etc. Further, some characteristics are influenced by dominant genes while some other by recessive genes present on autosomes. So as we learned in the beginning about dominant, recessive, so the dominant traits are influenced and the other one the recessive ones are present in the autosome but they are suppressed. So here we can see some of the autosomal dominant traits like widow's peak and Huntington's disease. Whereas autosomal recessive traits like PKU which is phenylketonuria, cystic fibrosis and sickle cell anemia which you have learned earlier as well. Now here I added two charts where you can see autosomal dominant inheritance. One parent affected, that is if the male, that is the father is affected, mother is normal, the son is affected and daughter is affected, that is 25% each, whereas 25% will be a normal daughter and a normal son. That means 50% child may be affected and 50% may be normal. Now, in case of autosomal recessive inheritance, if both parents are carrier, that means father is having the trait, mother is a carrier, then the normal son will be 25% or the normal child, the 50% female may be a carrier and the 25% that is a son can be a affected individual as father is a uh, where uh, father if he is having the trait it will definitely pass and if uh, same trait is carried from the mother then in that case possibility of person or the child getting infected becomes 100% sure. So in this case 25% normal, 50% carrier and 25% affected. 
Moving further, we can take these traits one by one. The first one being widow speak. Now, what is widow speak? If you observe the image, you can see a V-shape appearance in the forehead, which is a dominant trait of widow speak. Whereas the straight line of the hair or hairline is recessive trait. So we have added one more image to very clearly understand the dominant trait of widow speak. You can see in this particular image okay now you can take the points one by one a prominent v-shaped hairline on forehead is described as widow's peak it is determined by autosomal dominant gene which you can see in the image further widow's peak occurs in homozygous dominant that is ww and also heterozygous individuals with this capital W and small w. So in case of homozygous, it is capital WW. Whereas in case of heterozygous, capital W and small w. Whereas further, individuals with homozygous recessive, that is WW genotype, have a single or straight hairline, that is no widow's peak, which you can see in the second part of the image. Both male and females have equal chance of inheritance so here it is not that the female may get the trait male may not get or vice versa but here both are having the chances of getting this particular trait that is it is 50 50 chances of getting in or seen in case of male or female clear now coming to the second trait that is phenyl ketonuria pku it is an inborn metabolic disorder it is inborn caused due to recessive autosomal gene. So it is not the dominant one, but because of the recessive one. When recessive gene are present in homozygous condition, phenylalanine hydroxylase enzyme is not produced. This enzyme is essential for conversion of amino acid phenylalanine into tyrosine. Due to the absence of this enzyme, phenylalanine is not converted into tyrosine. That is why this particular disorder is called as phenylketonuria or PKU. Hence, phenylalanine and its derivative are accumulated in the blood and the cerebrospinal fluid which is CSF. It affects development of brain and causes mental retardation. So, as you uh, saw in the second point, the enzyme is essential for the conversion of as amino acid phenylalanine into tyrosine. But due to the absence, it is not converted and it starts to accumulate in the blood due to which it causes various disorders like uh, the development of brain is affected or even it can lead to mental retardation. Further, excess phenylalanine is excreted in urine. Hence, the disease is called phenylketonuria. So, as it is excreted through the urine, that name is put up as PKU, that is phenylketonuria. Clear? Now, here I put two images. One showing the structure of phenylalanine as it gets uh, attached uh, with the phenylalanine hydroxylase. It forms uh, tyrosine. So, you can see here converted into tyrosine. Then here you can see if both the parents are having the trait, one may be the affected one, two will be a carrier and one will be unaffected individual as we saw in the initial part of the slide where 50% will be a carrier, 25% affected and 25% will be unaffected. So here what are the uh, causes or disorders cause? Brain damage, cataract, jaundice, enlarged liver, kidney damage if a galactosomic infant is given milk unmetabolized milk sugars build up and damage the liver eyes kidneys and brain okay now moving further now the sex linked inheritance genes located on non homologous region of sex chromosome are called sex linked inheritance so here it is present in the sex chromosome and that also in the non homologous region again in the previous uh, part of the video we learned the homologous and the non homologous region so here the genes are located on the non homologous region of the sex chromosome the traits are determined by the sex linked genes are called sex linked 
traits. Since it is present in the X and Y chromosome, these are called as sex-linked traits. The inheritance of sex-linked genes from parents to the offspring is called sex-linked inheritance. There are two types of sex-linked genes, that is X-linked and Y-linked. Further, uh, X-linked, that is sex-linked genes, First point, the X-linked genes are located on the non-homologous region of X chromosome and these genes do not have corresponding allele on Y chromosome. So, it is only on the X-linked genes, not there is no corresponding allele on Y chromosome. So, because of which females as they are having two X chromosome, in females two recessive sex-linked genes are required for expression of sex-linked traits. If one X chromosome carries a recessive gene for sex linked trait, its effect is suppressed by the dominant gene present on the other chromosome. What does that mean? As females are having two X chromosomes, if one X has the trait, but it will be a recessive one. Reason? The second one, the normal gene is the dominant one. So, because of which it will be not seen, but it may be a carrier. So, the females with one recessive genes are carriers. The carrier female is physically normal and she does not suffer from the disease or disorder. But male has only one X chromosome. If X chromosome carries X-linked recessive gene for the particular sex-linked trait, then it is expressed phenotypically because there is no dominant gene on Y chromosome to suppress its effect. Now, what does that mean? As we know, male it is XY, female XX. So, in male, if the trait is present, then automatically 100% chances are there it will be seen in the male child or it is female phenotypically it is expressed because the other gene is Y or other chromosome is Y. So, there is no corresponding allele as we read earlier in the Y chromosome. So, naturally, the phenotypic character will be visible. Therefore, X-linked trait appear more frequently in males than in females. So, this particular trait is 100% seen in male, whereas in female it is very less reason because of two X chromosome where one is always the dominant one. Example of X-linked trait include hemophilia, color blindness, night blindness, myopia, muscular dystrophy. Now, moving further, Y-linked genes or otherwise called as Hollandric genes. Now, genes located on non-homologous region of Y chromosome are called Y-linked genes. The Y-linked genes are inherited directly from male to male. Now, this is very clear reason Y chromosome only present in male. So, if any trait present in Y-linked genes or the Hollandric genes, automatically it is passed on from father to son or from male to male. In man, the Y-linked genes such as hypertrichosis is responsible for excessive development of hair on the pinna of the ear. This character is transmitted directly from father to son. Okay, so uh, in case of X-linked genes, it is seen more in males because again one X chromosome, females, it may be a carrier and less possibility to be present because of two X chromosome. Whereas Y-linked genes only present in male and only chromosome, then 100% the particular trait is seen in the child from male to male or from father to son. So here I put the image of X-linked that is night blindness. What is that night blindness? Eating a, uh, you can see here the vision is not visible in the night. So here eating a diet deficient in vitamin A over a period of time may result in a condition called night blindness. So always our food will, should be rich in vitamin A. Then I put another image where you can see the differentiation of the eye. Uh, one of the eye which is very clear, other is uh, of slightly opaque appearance, right? Then second, again X-linked trait, muscular dystrophy. You can see a normal child and a child with the muscular dystrophy, how the uh, uh, muscles becomes weakened. Then third image is of the Y-linked trait, that is hypertrichosis. So you can see here, man 
having a, a hair on the ear or the external ear that is pinna. Now, the trait color blindness. Color blindness is X-linked recessive disorder where person is unable to distinguish between red and green color as both the colors appear gray. It is caused due to recessive X-linked genes that is XC which prevents formation of color sensitive cells. The cones in the retina of the eye. The homozygous recessive females that is XCXC and hemizygous recessive male that is XCY and are unable to distinguish between red and green color. So here the color appears what? Gray. So the person in case of color blindness is not able to differentiate the green and red color. The frequency of color blindness woman is much less than the color blind men. Again here the occurrence of this particular trait is more in men. Again the reason same having XY chromosome. In female it is XX. So one will the normal one will be the dominant. The trait will be the recessive factor or and it will not appear in the phenotypic which is possible in case of a male. Dominant X-linked gene is necessary for formation of color sensitive cell in the retina of eye. Thus genotypes of male and female individuals can be represented as, as the male female that is the sex normal uh, X capital C Y here in female it is X capital C X capital C that is both uh, chromosomes having the normal color blind here is X small C Y which indicates color blindness. Second, uh, in case of female, both the X should carry the particular trait that is small c, small c, where in case of carrier, one capital C and other is small c. So the inheritance of color blindness can be studied in the following two types of marriages or example which we are learning from the next slide. Now, take the two example. First one, marriage between colorblind male with normal female will produce normal vision male and female offspring in F1. The sons having normal vision but daughter will be a carrier for the disease. Here if you see the example, parents, colorblind that is male, female is normal. Genotype, if you see, it is X small c y here it is x capital c x capital c that is both the chromosomes x chromosomes are having normal gene then gametes x that is small c y and here in both the cases x capital c then in that case 50 percent daughters will be carrier and the sons will be normal then in second example, if you see marriage between a carrier female daughter and a normal male will produce female offspring with normal vision, but half of them will be carrier for the disease, half of the male offspring will be normal, remaining half will be a color blind. What does that mean? If you see here in this chart, parents, daughter is a carrier and male is normal. Uh, so if you see X capital C, X small c in male, X capital C and Y. Gametes X capital C, X small c, X capital C and Y. So if we see the progeny in the F1 generation, we can see X capital C, X capital C which is normal, female 25%. In second case, X capital C, Y, normal male 25%. Then carrier female, X capital C and X small c and X small c and Y is the color blend. So in this case, the possibility is 25% normal male, 25% uh, colorblind male, 25% carrier male, female and 25% normal female. Unlike the first one where 50% is carrier daughters and 50% normal sons. So from the above example, it is clear that this X-linked recessive gene for color blindness is inherited from color blind father to his grandson through his daughter. This type of inheritance is called as criss cross inheritance. So I hope this concept is clear of criss cross that is from grandfather it will not pass on to the son but to daughter and then to the son means it is uh, from grandfather 
to grandson it will be not seen in the father so since it is uh, uh, skipping one generation it is a alternate you can say generation that is why it is termed as criss cross inheritance further next one hemophilia there is bleeders disease now if i just give in a simple word to understand if there is a cut or a wound or a injury the blood flows right but in case of hemophilia or if there is a cut wound or injury if the blood flows it will not stop because there is no clotting taking place the clotting factor is not present in this hemophilia otherwise called as the bleeders disease so first point hemophilia is x linked recessive disorder in which blood fails to clot or coagulates very slowly the genes for normal clotting are dominant over the recessive genes for hemophilia the person having recessive genes for hemophilia is deficient in clotting factor that is 8 or 9 in the blood even minor injuries can cause continuous bleeding hence hemophilia is also called as bleeders disease so since there is a normal injury can also cause bleeding and the bleeding will not stop in case of hemophilic person further the recessive gene for hemophilia is located on the non homologous region of x chromosome as there is no corresponding allele on y chromosome to suppress its expression so men suffer from this disease women suffers only when both x chromosome have recessive genes or alleles as we seen again and again the earlier one where female if it is there only in one x chromosome other is dominant so the trait is not visible but in male it is 100% visible because it is present in the x chromosome and as male has got only one x chromosome the possibility is more then the genotype of male and female individuals can be represented as follows there is in case of sex male or female normal x capital h y x capital h capital h in case of normal hemophilic x small h y here x small h small h that is in both cases it should be having the trait then carrier x capital h and x small h like color blindness hemophilia also shows criss cross inheritance the inheritance of hemophilia can be studied with the help of following example so uh, again in case of hemophilia similar to color blindness here it is a criss cross inheritance that is it is passed from grandfather to grandson not seen in the father so you can see the examples here uh, marriage between the hemophilic male and a normal female now it is there in the textbook figure number 3.12 and 3.13 so parents hemophilic male normal female genotype will be x small h y whereas in case of female normal x capital h x capital h here in case of gametes x small h which is the trait for in uh, the recessive gene y then x capital h capital h in f1 generation we can see carrier daughters that is 50% x capital h x small h in both the cases and normal sons again 50% reason x capital h y x capital h y so here in the f1 generation it is 50% normal son 50% carrier daughter but in the f2 generation it will be the son will definitely have that trait for hemophilia that's why it is a criss cross inheritance then here carrier daughter normal female that is if you see in this particular generation genotype x capital h x small h x capital h uh, y gametes x capital h x small h x capital h and y in the f1 generation after crossing over we can see normal female 25% that is x capital h in both the cases normal male 25% x capital h y carrier female x capital h x small h and color blind male 25% x small h y further sex determination now the mechanism by which 
sex is established is termed as sex determination means how it is determined or how the study is carried about the mechanism is termed as sex determination the term sex refers to sexual phenotype means as earlier as i mentioned male or female or a boy or a girl so it helps to determine the phenotype what is phenotype the external character in some species both male and female reproduce organs they are present in same organism so the reproductive organs are present in the same species it is described as bisexual or hermaphrodite or monoecious on other hand some species in which the organism have either male or female reproductive organs is said to be dioecious or unisexual so in case of humans we are dioecious reason male and female are separate so remember these terms dioecious monoecious or hermaphrodite uh, bisexual unisexual okay further german biologist henking in 1980 in 1891 while studying spermatogenesis of squash bug that is anasa tristis noted that 50% of sperms receive the unpaired chromosome while 50% sperm do not receive it so you can see here two images one of the german scientist that is uh, h henking Uh, while studying spermatogenesis of wasp noted a particular nuclear structure half of the sperm received the structure and half did not he did not speculate on the significance of this body but called as x body first experimental evidence evidence that led to the discovery of chromosome so that that, that is how the x and y chromosome determination was done then you can see here the example which was carried out by henking that is anasa tristis or otherwise called as the squash bug then henking gave a name to this structure as x body but he could not explain its role in sex determination further investigations by other scientists led to the conclusion that x body of henking was in fact a chromosome and gave the name x chromosome that's how the x chromosome was established further now sex determination in human beings the chromosomal mechanism of sex determination in human beings is xx xy that is the normal uh, sex a uh, chromosome in human beings the nucleus of each somatic cell contains 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs of chromosomes out of this 22 pair are autosomes and one pair of sex chromosome which already learned human female has a pair of xx homomorphic sex chromosome what is homomorphic homo means similar that's both the chromosomes are same xx while male has got xy heteromorphic sex chromosome that is uh, the both x and y they are differing thus genotype of female is 44 autosomes plus xx so total will be 46 similarly 44 autosomes plus xy again 46 but it is xy in male and xx in female so i added three images one human karyotype right from the chromosome number 1 till chromosome number 23 and 23rd you can see xx chromosome or xy similarly here determination of human sex so mother usually has 44 plus xx and in case of father male 44 xy so here the gametes are 22 plus x 22 plus x and in other case there is in case of male 22 plus x and 22 plus y so the gametes form or the offspring form will be 44 plus xx or 44 plus xy that is either male or female so female uh, that is girl child or a male that is boy child so it is xx or xy then here another chart which i put up is of the uh, punnett square where again male female so the x which has got xx chromosome sperms xy chromosome so when you do the checkers method you get xx xx xy xy so 50% possibility of male and 50% possibility of female that is male child or a female child further during gamete formation in male the diploid germ cell in testis undergoes spermatogenesis to produce two types of haploid sperms 50% sperms contain 22 autosomes and x chromosome 
while 50% sperms contain 22 autosomes and Y chromosome. In female, the diploid germ cells in ovaries undergoes oogenesis to produce only one type of egg. All eggs contain 22 autosomes and X chromosome. Thus, human male is heterogametic and female is homogametic. If sperm containing X chromosome fertilizes egg or the ovum, then diploid zygote is formed. Thus, or this uh, grows into a female child. If the sperm containing Y chromosome fertilizes the egg, then diploid zygote is formed that grows into a male child. So, as we gone through the uh, earlier slides. So if it is XX, it is a female child or a girl child. If it is XY, it is a male child or a boy. This indicates that the sex of a child depends on the type of sperm fertilizing the egg and hence father is responsible for determination of sex of the child and not the mother. Due to lack of knowledge, women are often blamed for giving birth to a female child. Now this is uh, statement is very true. The person who does not have any knowledge, they usually blame the female or the mother for the child, uh, who whether it's a boy or a female or a girl. But actually it is father who is responsible uh, for a boy or a girl or for a male or a female child because father is carrying the X and the Y chromosome. So if X and X forms, it will be a female child. Or if it is Y and a X, then it is a male child. So here, if you see again the chart which is there in the text, figure 3.14, where you can see male and female gametes, meios by meiosis, fertilization occurs. Then you can see here XX in case of XY in case of male, XX in case of female. In F1 generation, X female xx again xx here xy xy so 50 percent female 50 percent male is the possibility and it depends on the father who will be responsible for the determination of sex but not the mother now sex de determination birds now we saw in case of humans it is xy xx so here directly if you observe in case of birds, it is ZW and ZZ. So, see the chromosomes. In birds, the chromosomal mechanism of sex determination is ZW and ZZ type. In this type, females are heterogametic and produce two types of X. 50% X carry Z chromosome, while 50% X carry W chromosome. So, here it is vice versa. That is, unlike humans where female has XX and male XY, here it is ulta or reverse. That is, in case of female, it is ZW heterogametic, whereas in male, it is similar ZZ. Okay. Then, uh, males are homogametic and produce one type of sperm. Each sperm carries a Z chromosome. Thus, sex of the individual depends on the kind of egg or ova fertilized by the sperm. So, here you can see parents, male and female, genotype 2 and Z, Z2 and plus ZW, gametes N plus Z, N plus Z, N plus Z, N plus W. So, you have 2N plus ZZ or 2N plus ZW, that is female bird and male bird. So, it is figure 3.15, sex determination birds. I added one more image for your better understanding. ZW, female, ZZ, male. So, uh, occur in certain insect and vertebrates like amphibians, reptiles, birds and plants. Female has one Z and one W chromosome, produce two types of eggs. Male, two homomorphics, that is Z chromosome. In female, it is ZW. Now, something interesting which is given in the text. That is interesting facts of Bonelia viridis. Now, what is the interesting fact? In Bonelia viridis, the environmental factors determine the sex of the individual. So, here the environment is, plays a role in determining the sex of the individual is a male or a female worm. The sex of the worm, Bonilia viridis, depends on which location the Bonilia larva gets settled. So, also where is the location? 
the marine female bonilia worm has about 10 cm long body so the length is almost 10 cm she has a proboscis uh, that can extend over a meter in length one meter in length so it's quite long if a bonilia larva settles on sea floor it becomes female so if it is on sea floor it is a female however when a larva lands on a female proboscis and enters female's mouth it migrates into her uterus and differentiates into a female now this is something unique or unusual right so the larva if it is present on the proboscis of the female so it enters into the female's mouth migrates into the uterus and it uh, remains or differentiate as a male one so the male lives as a parasite inside the uterus of the female of fertilizing and a female fertilizing her egg. So you can see here a uh, uh, image of the species Bonilia verdis. Here you can see very clearly inside which the male worm is present. Now moving further, third one or C, sex determination in honeybee. Now in honeybee, if you observe, uh, chromosomal mechanism of sex determination is haplodiploid type. In this type, sex of the individual is determined by the number of set of chromosomes received. So here it is not the uh, chrom chromosomes which is XY or XX or ZW, ZZ, but here the set of chromosome which is received. So here females are diploid that is 2 and 32 and males are haploid that is 16. So in that case chromo the honeybees has got 16 chromosomes, uh, haploid N and uh, males and females has got 32. The female produces haploid X, that is N is equal to 16 by meiosis and male produce haploid sperms, N is equal to 16 by mitosis. So female haploid meiosis, male haploid sperms, mitosis. If the egg is fertilized by sperm, the zygote develops into a diploid female, 2N is equal to 32, queen and worker. An unfertilized egg develops into a haploid male and is equal to 16 that is drone. So here if you observe the drones are actually the male, the worker and queen are the female and uh, uh, the further development takes place by parthenogenesis in case of the haploid male. The diploid female gets differentiated into either worker or queen bee depending on the food they consume during their environment. So if the queen gets a royal treatment, royal jelly, then it becomes a queen. If not, then worker. So your diploid larvae which gets royal jelly as food develops into queen that is fertile female and other develops into a workers which is sterile female. So you can see in the image worker queen and a drone. A honeybee, the scientific name is what? Apis mellifera. So here you can see the figure 3.16 given in the text sex determination in honeybees. Parents, female, male, 2n is equal to 32, n is equal to 16. Then by meiosis, mitosis, meiosis in case of female, mitosis in case of male. So here both their cell divisions are also taking place by different method. So gametes n is equal to 16, n is equal to 16 and here also n is equal to 16. So without fertilization, parthenogenesis takes place, n is equal to 16 that is becomes haploid male whereas the other becomes diploid female. So it is figure 3.16 that is sexual determination in honeybee. Now further we are going to learn about the genetic disorder. So I put a one beautiful image of the eye color is a rare genetic mutation now such rare everybody would like to have such mutation right because of the beautiful eyes the child is having right so this mutation everyone would like to have at least uh, one of the mutation the eye color right so we are going to learn more disorder uh, uh, the inheritance of genetic traits now the genetic disorder. So genetic disorder are broadly grouped into two categories as Mendelian disorder and chromosomal disorder. So two categories it is put up. So Mendelian disorder are mainly caused due to alteration or mutation in gene. Example, thalassemia, 
सिकल सेल अनिमिया कलर ब्लाइंडनेस हिमोफीलिया फिनाइल कीटोन्यूरिया सो यू कैन सी सम ऑफ द एग्जांपल वी ऑलरेडी रेड अर्लियर दैट इज पीकेयू कलर ब्लाइंडनेस हिमोफीलिया राइट हियर वी आर एडिंग फ्यू मोर थैलेसीमिया सिकल सेल अनिमिया आल्सो आल्सो वी आर लर्नड अर्लियर सो ऑन द अदर हैंड क्रोमोसोमल डिसऑर्डर आर कॉज्ड ड्यू टू द एब्सेंस और एक्सेस ऑफ वन और मोर क्रोमोसोम्स और द एबनॉर्मलिटीज अरेंज फॉर एग्जांपल डाउन सिंड्रोम Turner syndrome and Klein-Filter's syndrome. So here we can see a child born uh, during which, uh, because of certain disorder or chromosomal disorder, the child may have any such disorder. So here another image which I added: rare genetic disease describes a group of genetic disorder whose prevalence is up to. 5 out of 10000 so out of 10000 cases the probability is only 5 may get the particular trait or disorder second point there are 260 to 450 million people affected by rare disorder so even this rare disorder occurs in many people as the number is almost 240 uh, 260 to 450 million third there are 6 or you can say 60000 rare genetic disorder inheritance of genetic disorder 10% sex chromosome link 32% autosomal link and 44% autosome recessive the next point is staggering 83% of all the rare genetic disorders affect the child so it is always seen in the child uh, 89.6% of pediatric rare disorders compromise the nervous system clear now coming to the first one here thalassemia thalassemia is a autosomal inherited recessive disease the hemoglobin molecule is made up of four polypeptide chains two alpha and two beta so here it is a autosomal inherited recessive disease and it has got four polypeptide chains two alpha two beta the synthesis of alpha chains are controlled by two closely linked genes hba1 and hba2 on chromosome 16 so it affects which one the chromosome number 16 while the synthesis of beta chain is controlled by single chain hbb which is on chromosome number 11 so depending upon which chain of hemoglobin is affected the thalassemia is classified as alpha thalassemia and beta thalassemia it is caused due to deletion or mutation of gene which codes for alpha and beta globin chains that results in abnormal synthesis of globin in thalassemia person shows symptoms like anemia pale yellow skin change in size and shape of rbc slow growth and development dark urine etc so here the major symptoms starting with anemia then pale yellow skin change in size and shape of rbcs slow growth development dark urine are some of the symptoms massive blood transfusion is needed to those patients who are having this particular disease thalassemia differs from sickle cell anemia so sickle cell anemia is also related to blood but it is different from sickle cell anemia the former is a qualitative problem of synthesizing few globin molecule while later is a qualitative problem of synthesizing of incorrectly functional globin so there's a major difference qualitative problem that is synthesizing few globin molecule and here in this case that is sickle cell anemia is incorrectly functional globin so you can see here two uh, images one the animation one thalassemia causes a blood to make fewer healthy rbc and hemoglobin than normal that leads to anemia whereas in the second image normal and thalassemic blood cells how it appears now second is down syndrome that is 21st trisomy down syndrome is named after the physician john langdon down who first described this autosomal disorder in 1866 so you can see the image of the child uh, slightly unusual than the normal child uh, but it is uh, no sometimes not easily recognized but sometimes by the facial appearance we can identify this syndrome is caused due to an extra copy of chromosome number 21 so as we know each of the chromosome are in pairs but 21st one has three chromosome other than two 
it shows presence of three copies of 21st chromosome instead of homologous pair. This individual which have 47 chromosomes instead of normal number 46. So as we know, the humans are having 46 pairs of chromo 46 chromosomes or 23 pairs, but in this case it is 47 chromosomes. So 21st trisomy occurs due to non-distinction or failure of separation of chromosome during gamete formation so during gamete formation 21st one there is no disjunction or failure failure of separation of chromosome because of which there is three chromosome in 21st one so these patients have mild or moderate mental retardation and skeletal development is poor so the child is usually having a mental retardation and skeletal development is also poor now what are the other symptoms distant facial features like small head ears and mouth face is typically flat and rounded with flat nose open mouth and protruding tongue eyes slant up and out with internal epicanthal folds flat hands and stubby fingers and palm is broad with single palmar crease so you can see the different uh, symptoms or disorders of the Down syndrome. So here you can see the image of the child and uh, Down syndrome karyotype chart which I put up. We can see in the 21st one there are three chromosomes instead of two. Now the second which we are learning over here is Turner syndrome. It is X monosomy or X0 females. Now here it is slightly different from Downs. In Downs it is 47, here it is 45. Also, what is the other major difference? Here it is in the sex chromosome. It is sex chromosomal disorder caused due to non-disjunction of chromosomes during gamete formation. Individual born with Turner syndrome has 44 plus X0 or 45. They are phenotypically male since they are having only X chromosome it is usually external appearance is usually female they have short stature and webbed neck low posterior hairline broad shield shaped chest poorly developed ovaries and breast and low intelligence which are the symptoms of Turner syndrome so you can see again the character which I have put up the chart where you can see the 23rd pair the sex chromosome having only single chromosome rather than a pair and here I, again I put one more chart showing the symptoms short stature small mandible high arch palate low set ears low hairline bicuspid aortic valve coartication of iota uh, diagnosis is as it is karyotype, ovarian dysgenesis, uh, then amenorrhea, infertility. So here, uh, short fourth and fifth metacarpal bones, widely spaced nipples, lymphedema of hands or feet. And here you can see webbed feet, which is usually seen in a aquatic bird like ducks. Now coming to the next. Third type, Kleinfilter syndrome. Now that is double XY. So here we can see again it is 47 like Down syndrome. But in Downs, 47 in which uh, 21st one, the autosome is 3. Here the sex chromosome, there are 3 chromosomes. So it is chromosomal disorder caused due to extra X chromosome in males. Thus genotype of individual is 44 plus XXY. They are described as feminized males. Extra chromosome is a result of non-disjunction of X chromosome during meiosis. Individual is male and has overall muscular development. Voice pitch is harsh and have underdeveloped testis. They are tall with long arms, feminine development, development of breasts that is gynecocosmatia and no spermatogenesis. Therefore, individuals are sterile that is they are not fertile. So here again the Kleinfelder syndrome's chart showing the XXY that is 23rd pair sex chromosome having one extra X chromosome in case of Kleinfelter syndrome. Then lastly, the questions based on today's part of the video. Okay, 
so thank you all of you hope the concept is clear with the help of images and animation so thank you all of you this chapter ends over here